everyone. Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at the astrology for Feb. We're going to see what's been happening. We're going to see what is likely to happen. I've been looking today at what's been going on in the news and there's actually quite a lot of news. So we will go through that. My original plan for this introduction was to go a little bit deeper actually into the relationship between Harry and Megan because that was such a popular video that I did and I think a lot of new subscribers came in through that there was a lot of chat about it I even had a couple of emails about it so I was going to talk more about those two but what happened today was I watched a couple of videos by Thomas Markle and it just broke my heart I thought oh they should meet the dad, what's going on? And then all the enthusiasm I had for talking about those two kind of vanished. And then when I looked at the news today, I saw that there's quite a lot going on. So we'll actually do a news matchup of what's been happening lately and how that's been matching up with what's going on in the sky because there is quite a bit. And then for the mini reports this time, there is quite a lot to talk about. In Feb, we've got some big things. We've got Mars Ketu conjunction. We've got Mercury retrograde. We have Venus exalted. Venus is beautiful, right? Venus is um, giving us a lot of great energy this month. Thank goodness. We have good news. I have good news for everybody this month. So that's good. Uh, and some of you are particularly lucky with this Mars Ketu conjunction. You're going to have a good time. So there's a few people that are really going to be able to use this conjunction to effect and win over the competition. But before I get into all that, I just also want to welcome all the new subscribers and say thank you so much to those of you who subscribe. Uh, it's awesome seeing your comments, seeing your likes, your dislikes, everything. Whatever you express here is great and I love to see that. So thank you. Thank you for everybody who spends their time on this channel, right? That is what you're doing. You're giving me the greatest gift you could give me are giving me your time so thank you thank you thank you I really just wanted to spend a moment appreciating you guys because I do all of this for you guys and um, it's really nice to know that you're enjoying what I'm doing a new thing that I have started which I'll probably go into again at some point I'll bring it up again I'll bring it up twice why not uh, is that I've started a new moon and a full moon meditation. Now that is actually something that one of my lovely viewers requested and she told me that she listens to my meditations um, every night. I believe it helps her to just, you know, keeps her positive, keeps her in the right frame of mind. And the way I designed those planets meditations was just as a way to enable you to tune into the energy of that planet and if you're feeling deficient in a planetary energy maybe you know maybe that planet is a bit challenging in your birth chart well hey why don't you use your free will and listen to that meditation it will help you build up the energy and the mindset of that planet and it's your way of honoring that planet as well you know you're tuning into that planet and you're honoring the planet so yeah, these, um, these meditations are becoming quite, quite popular with you guys and, and thank you for watching them. What I'll do is I'll put a link to um, the latest meditation that I've done, which is the new moon in Capricorn. I think I launched that on the 24th of Jan. And yeah, it's just a nice little meditation. You can have a listen to that. The next one will be coming up and I'll talk you through that. But why don't we get uh, stuck into the news matchup for this month what i will do is i'll put timestamp links below so that you can just click on the bits that you want to watch uh, i don't know if i'll timestamp within the news matchup but i certainly will do my best to timestamp the whole thing as much as i can so that those of you who are in a rush or you just want to watch a particular bit you can just watch your particular bit and carry on so Let's take a look at the news, what's been happening. I had one of you, one of my regulars, Henrik, thank you so much for commenting and mentioning that there is quite a bit of news in Brazil. I Google searched that today and I had a look and you're absolutely right. Yeah, there's, um, there's flooding happening there, which is quite serious. And I did want to take a look at that. 
Um, what I did on this occasion was I plugged in the chart for Brazil. I actually looked up, I thought, oh, is there a chart for Brazil? I've never plugged in a chart for Brazil. I did that. Got a date here, uh, September 7, 1822 at 4.35 p.m. on a Saturday. So I plugged this in, I had a look in my system and I noticed that Saturn is at the Gandanta point for this chart in terms of houses, right? So, you know, that, that could be a reason there as to why, um, as to why there's that major flooding happening there. That could be a reason because I was really looking for a reason and that was pretty much the only thing I found. So while Saturn is not in Gandanta, technically, according to signs, it is according to house for Brazil. So that could, could very well be a reason. The other thing that I had a look at was coronavirus, which is, I hope I've pronounced that right, uh, but it's the virus that's broken out, I believe, in China and it seems to be spreading. I clicked on a news report today that said that it could even be spreading to Australia, which is really sad considering what Australia has just gone through. Uh, it's another blow to the economy there potentially. So this is a really tough time for that region, for that part of the world. Uh, when I look at my notes here, I've, I've had a look astrology wise and it is interesting actually there are a couple of things that I'm able to draw out one is this is a bit of some wishful thinking or hopeful thinking here and that is on the 4th of Feb Mercury steps into Sutta Bishak Aquarius and it will be there for most of Feb so I've got the note here will this be the month for the Chinese to innovate and contain such outbreaks once and for all remembering the SARS pigeon outbreak and that just I just remembered SARS and yeah as I wrote that down I, I was kind of it's a bit of a wishful thinking that I've got going on here but I'm hoping that when Mercury goes into Sutta Bishak Aquarius could this be the time where they figure some things out in terms of um, how to contain and prevent these things once and for all because we did have SARS a long time ago and I was just remembering that. So then I Google searched SARS because I wanted to see, I wonder if there's some astrological connection with what happened then. And that was really interesting to see. I discovered that um, it broke out in November 2001 and SARS happened in China and in Hong Kong. Now, when I clicked back in my astrology software, I discovered that Rahu Ketu Axis uh, was in almost the exact same position, right? So, as they are now. So, Rahu was in Gemini, Ketu was, is, uh, was and is in Sagittarius. It's the same thing that's going on. And that was really interesting because I do think that this is in connection with Rahu in Gemini in, in quite a big way. I remember when I did the video to say that Rahu and Ketu are stepping into Gemini and Sagittarius, I did talk about there being airborne strikes. And at that time, there were, were a lot of attacks in the air and airborne strikes and things like that. And then I started thinking, well, if you think about it, this virus is an airborne attack in many ways. So I do think this is linked in to Rahu. I did plug in a chart for China and I had a look and yes, I can construct an astrological story there. I'm pretty sure Mercury is the sixth Lord from the moon and things like that. And so, you know, I mean, we can make a story from that chart, but I'm not convinced by that chart. It says 1949, Beijing. I don't know. I, I didn't proceed with that. I thought the Brazil one was interesting though. I, I think there's something there about Saturn having crossed a very sensitive point that could cause flooding. So that one I'm okay with, but yeah, I wasn't convinced with the Chinese chart. Uh, I'll do some more research into it. But what I will say is that we are experiencing continuous difficulties with um, things that are airborne. So I, I dug further and did some more research. Rahu and Gemini, things airborne, air, air tragedies, plane crashes, right? So we've got, in Australia, I read a headline, three killed while 
firefighting plane crashes. Another thing that we've got going on, Financial Times headline, Boeing seeks financial flexibility uh, as max crisis drags. I believe that there's an entire line, an entire fleet of planes that uh, has just been an utter disaster for Boeing. I think they've had to ground, I think it's all the 737 MAX planes. They're just, they're all terrible apparently. Another headline, I didn't even click on this. I didn't even have time to click on this. Another headline from CNN, I would never fly Boeing's new 777X. I mean, gee, poor Boeing, you know, so all of these airborne type things. We had a lot of airstrikes, you know, um, even this where they were using the air to to solve the fires in Australia on the land. You know, there, there was a crisis up there. Um, an airline, an entire airline has just been tanking and suffering throughout, throughout this entire time. So I do think that this Rahu in Gemini has been quite a tricky energy and a problematic energy in the world, um, as well as being a beneficial energy, okay? So there's a flip side. And I, you know, it, it, this Rahu in Gemini would have brought a lot of people together, would have brought um, a lot of people together through short trips and, and, and you know, um, there's a lot of benefit, huge amount of benefit that will be coming out of it as well. But it is interesting to draw our attention to, you know, what's what's not going right as well, to see that can we predict this. So when Rahu is next in Gemini, we know what to expect. Uh, I've got a note here about viruses because I was thinking, do viruses really spread through the air? Have I got that right? And they do indeed. Uh, I did some research and found this. It said viruses can spread through the air in two ways, inside large droplets that fall quickly to the ground or inside tiny, tiny droplets that float in the air. And it had a diagram explaining all this thing. But, but that's Aquarian energy. Aquarius is the water bearer, I'm pretty sure. And the air does bear water. It, it holds our clouds. And it, um, it enables light to flicker through the air. <laughs> this is a fun time. All right, so anyway, let's carry on, shall we? Uh, I think that was my cue to click on the next slide. So the other thing I just want to bring up is that we've got a full moon in Eshlesha. Uh, that's Sunday, Feb 9th, 2020. And instead of me going through it now, what I will do is I will take you through it in my meditation. So I'll be creating a meditation. I will launch it on the 9th of Feb. So for those of you who are enjoying the meditation, stick around for that one. I will put another link to my last uh, new, my last moon meditation, the new moon in Shravana. So that's somewhere here or here. I don't know where it's going to pop up, but it'll pop up somewhere. And I think I'm ready to get stuck into, I'm just looking at 14 minutes. Wow, this is very short this time. So do you know what? I think I'll, I'll leave the Meghan Markle and Harry thing that I had planned. I was basically just going to talk about their relationship a bit more, seeing since it is Feb, it's the month of love, Valentine's Day, all that kind of thing. And I was really going to talk about Harry because I think he's being amazing. I think he's kind of... Um, I, I watched his speech where he talked about what he's doing and he's embarking on a hero's journey. And this is very astrological in nature and it's also very, um, I've been studying the tarot a little bit just on the side. I got a new book today, by the way, look at this one. This one came through, B.V. Raman, How to Judge a Horoscope with thin paper and fine print and a bit of a funny smell. I love books like this. But I've also been studying tarot a little bit and you know, the fool's journey. He's embarking on a, a, a brand new journey. It's very, very exciting and astrologically and I was wanting to get into it and talk more about it. And I was going to talk more about it um, in the context of uh, his brother and his dad because actually that's, that's really influenced what he's doing and I, and I think what he's doing is very positive. And I was going to go through that but might do it in another video. I'm not sure if you're interested in my thoughts on that. Um, let me know in the comments below and I might do a video about it. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get stuck into the mini reports because there is quite a bit to go through. So Aries Moon, welcome. Welcome Aries Moon. We're going to go through what's coming up in the month for you. 
Now specific dates I'm going to put those in the description below so please do look there for the description below but all this movement that I'm talking about is basically happening across the entire month. So if you want specific dates, have a look below. But um, I'll take you through what the major events are. So we've got Venus exalted in Pisces. Uh, we've got Mercury retrograde. We've got Ketu Mars conjunction. How are these going to play out for you? So we've got Ketu Mars conjunction, which is roughly mid to late Feb. Your Ascendant Lord is conjunct Ketu. And Ketu, as we know, is the flag of conquered territory. It's the south node. It's the thing we've mastered. It's the thing we know really well. So I've got the note here that you will feel skilled in battle. Whenever I see Mars and Ketu conjunct in a birth chart, which isn't too often, uh, it does denote someone who's very skilled in battle. So you may feel quite skilled in fighting for what you believe in this month, but I'm going to say be careful. Now, why am I saying be careful? Because Mercury is retrograde um, and where Mars Ketu is for you can be challenging when it comes to work uh, or even relationship with father or relationship with gurus or those who are senior to you as well. So you're going to want to be careful here. Um, Jupiter is in his own house, which is good. Jupiter is well placed here. So there's some stability here for you. There's some nice energy for you here for you um, coming with Jupiter but I would say that with Mars and Ketu this position of those two being pretty sure this is ninth house for you I don't think I said it's yeah be careful okay just be careful you might feel very um, able to battle and win but just watch your words right uh, but we do have good news here for you and the good news is that Venus is exalted all month fantastic this is beautiful for love and relationships. Great. Um, great time for time on your own or as an escape of some kind with someone you love. So yes, this is uh, 12th house here. So that's beautiful. Mercury in Aquarius. So I think that's 11th house for you. And this is good for communications, networking, racking up opportunities to bring in money. Fantastic. This is a beautiful transit. The only note I have regarding Mercury is to be careful on the 25th when Mercury will be both combust and retrograde. But overall, you know, it's a pretty good month for you, Aries Moon. So we are now going to welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at three major activities in the sky and for specific dates, please look at the description below. That's where the dates are going to be, all right? So, but this, all this activity is basically happening across the month of Feb, and I'm going to speak in a general way about this. So, we've got Ketu Mars conjunction happening in your eighth house. Jupiter is also there. So now you see, you've got, I would have said that Saturn has left the eighth house, and that's fantastic for you, and it is, right? So you're happy, and that's great, and whoosh, Saturn is um, flying out of this house, and that's wonderful. But you've still got some activity there, all right? So if you, you might feel a bit relieved that yes, Saturn has moved, shifted into Capricorn, next 2.5 years are going to be a lot better, but there's still some activity in the 8th house. There's still a little bit of unfinished business there, all right? So um, it, this unfinished business might be keeping your finances a little bit tight. Um, it might still make you rely on other people's money, say, for example. Uh, but from the end of March onwards, this is going to clear. Okay, so if you are still a little bit in a pickle, some of you might be flying forward, some of you might be still finding things a bit tough. End of March onwards, this is going to clear. So hang in there if things are tight. Um, you will have a better time ahead overall, okay? Uh, there is good news though. There is good news and that is Venus exalted in your 11th house. Beautiful. I love this energy. This is really, really good. So if you are single, get out and mingle. <laughs> That's so cheesy. I heard that on um, Sasha Bonison's videos. He's a tarot card reader. So if you're wondering where that comes from, I stole it from him. So if you're single, get out and mingle. Uh, great time to network. Great time to get your business out there. Great time to get your CV out there. If you're absolutely tired of your job and you want to change jobs, I can understand. And that this might be a good time to be looking at doing some of that. Um, 
Mercury in the 10th house. Yeah, this is fantastic for work life. So that's why this is also good to be getting the CV out there. Communicate with confidence, uh, propose new ideas, use your logic, okay? When you're at work, use your logic, use your mind to great effect. Your mind will be sharp and um, raring to go. There is a retrograde though. Retrograde doesn't necessarily mean that there's something bad happening. It just means that there's a bit more power actually because the earth, we're kind of moving in such a way that we're getting a bit more mercury energy. So um, what I would say there is just be careful, especially on the 25th, when Mercury is combust and retrograde, all right? But otherwise, Mercury and Venus are terrific energies for you, and this is fantastic. So if you're feeling creative, if you're feeling artistic, um, oh my gosh, beautiful, and great, great time for love and romance as well. So Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. We are now gonna welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, for specific dates on all these transits that I'm going to talk about, have a look at the description below. But everything I'm going to be talking about is basically happening over the course of Feb. So that's why I don't feel the need to draw out any particular dates this time. I've got Mars Kethi conjunction happening in your seventh house from the moon. So Jupiter is in this house too. Yes, it's good. Jupiter is happy to be there. So Jupiter is providing you some stability this month, which is great, but Mars Kethi conjunction is not ideal. Um, so that is to do with, because it's seventh from the moon, it's to do with your business, it's to do with partnerships. If you're self-employed, it's to do with all that kind of thing as well. Um, be careful in business and in marriage. It's also all co-workers, you know, if you're not married. So you may feel empowered to fight, right, with um, Mars Kethi being conjunct. And I've got the note, if you know that you're right, drive forward, but I would say be careful. Uh, I'm really saying be careful actually. Um, Mercury is retrograde, so on the 25th of Feb, um, he's combust and retrograde. So especially watch what you say on that day, and especially towards your partner, especially towards um, business colleagues, co-workers, that kind of thing. Now there is good news, uh, Venus is exalted all month and for you that's happening in your 10th house. So this is good energy for business. 10th um, house transit is not the very best but it's good and Venus is exalted so that's great. So it's, it's good for business. Uh, Mercury is ninth from your moon. Okay, this is not the best transit either. Okay, um, Mercury will be much better when he enters your 10th house in April. So Gemini Moon, I would say overall this is a mixed period of time for you. Um, if you're planning really big things, maybe you might want to wait uh, a bit. There are better transits coming, but um, I could have a look at where is... I'm just going to bring up your chart again actually, your transit chart, because I just want to look at one more thing, Gemini Moon. I just want to double check on where is your Saturn. Yeah, okay, it's eighth from, yeah, the moon, yeah. All right, Gemini moon, so it's, it is a, a mixed time for you. There are better transits coming, I will tell you that. So it doesn't, you know, and yes, we have Mercury retrograde, and does that mean that you should stop everything? No, it doesn't. Keep going, but just take your time. Um, don't push, don't force. Okay, that, that would be my advice for you. So Gemini Moon, thank you so much. Oh, at the 24 minute mark, it's gonna cut soon. We're now gonna welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time I'm gonna put specific dates in the description below, but all the planetary activity that I'm talking about is happening across the month of Feb. So you'll feel all of this, um, you know, and there will be crescendos of energy, you know, kind of at the middle of the month. But um, let's take a look at this. So for you, we've got Mars Keta conjunction happening in the sixth house from your moon. Oh, this is excellent. Oh, good, good, good. I have good news for you straight away. I'm not giving this good news to just everybody, by the way. Um, there are only three signs that are getting this level of good news and you're one of them. So uh, Jupiter's here too. All right, Jupiter's not so pleased to be here, but that's okay. Mars Ketu is gonna be great for you. And I'm gonna say because of the Lord's 
that where what Mars laws is over for you. I'm going to say this is going to be great for your creativity and for your work. Um, this is going to be good. So I've got the note here. You can win over the competition. You can drive forwards in your career this month. I will say be careful though, because we do have Mercury retrograde, and we do have. Mercury combust and retrograde on the 25th. So on the 25th of Feb in particular, be careful with what you say uh, and don't force anything. So with Mars and Ketu, sometimes you can have quite the feeling that you're invincible or you know I can achieve anything or I, I, I'm gonna fight and win. And um, usually Mars, Ketu, when I see it in a birth, birth chart, those people can win, right? So Mars Rahu likes to pick a fight but is an inexperienced in fighting, whereas Mars Ketu is experienced in fighting. Okay, um, so this is good energy, this is very good energy for you, but I will just say because of Mercury being retrograde um, and Mercury having, you know, not being in its best, well, let's have a look. No, Mercury's fantastic for you as well. Oh my God, well, this is amazing. You've got a lot of good energy here, Cancer Moon. No, no, no. Okay, well, this is good. But still be careful, right? Still be careful. I am going to say just a little bit be careful. You know, think twice, speak once, that kind of thing. But you've got, I mean, Venus is exalted all month. This is beautiful. So for you, this is in your ninth house. Oh, this is beautiful. So this is great all around. Great for luck. You might meet someone new. If you're single, get out and mingle. Uh, cheesy, but it rhymes and you should do that. Now, <laughs> Great for travel, a little quick getaway even. Why not? Because it's on that travel line, you know, Sagittarius, uh, Gemini. Could find a new guru, could indulge in learning, could indulge in fantastic books. I've been indulging in books lately. I recently finished reading Power vs. Force by David uh, Hawkins. Pretty sure that's his name. Amazing author, so do check that out if you get a chance. Uh, but Mercury, Mercury is fantastic for you. Finances, other people's money, managing other people's money. So eighth house here. So I mean, could even be um, travel with family, maybe um, that'd be all right. But yeah, this is this is a good placement for career. It's a good placement for money. Mercury's doing great. So you've got four terrific planets here. So that's beautiful, Cancer Moon. Um, that's looking great. So I wish you well with that. We are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now specific dates. Take a look at the description below. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some of the main planetary movements that are happening all month in Feb, okay? And things are going to quite crescendo around the middle of the month. Um, you feel it a bit more. So Mars Keter conjunction is happening for you fifth from your moon. Uh, you may feel creatively empowered. You might feel like you want to fight for what you believe in, that, you know, well, I'm designing the logo this way and it should be this way, right? So, you know, it can be that kind of thing. So you can create what you want to have materialized. Um, I would say as Mars is Lord of Ninth and Fourth House, I would say be careful in how you speak to mom and dad, all right? With this Mars Cade the Conjunction, you might think you're right and you might, you know, if there's a fighting mood or any of that going on, um, you might get into quarrels and things like that so be careful and especially be careful how you speak to mum and dad right uh, now especially on the 25th of Feb when Mercury, Mercury is combust and retrograde okay so you're gonna want to you're gonna want to think before you speak right that's gonna be really important Jupiter is providing some really nice stability here though so that's good so that could be expansion uh, in terms of your creative projects and that kind of thing so that's wonderful energy there now Venus is exalted all month in eighth house beautiful beautiful time for love great time for being with your partner um, good time to meet someone new an eighth house this could be time to manifest that secret admirer that person who's kind of been checking you out on social media or whatever um, if you have any of that you know this could be something happening there I don't know uh, Mercury isn't great though let's have a look at this seventh house transit so be careful in business and in your partnerships be careful in how you speak with partner or co-workers okay and yes I've got the note this for this month use your heart this month Venus give your logical mind a rest this month and that's Mercury okay because Mercury is not in a good transit for you so um, 
yeah think twice speak once it's kind of like use your heart this month your venus is is much better place so leo moon thank you so much for joining and we're now going to welcome virgo moon virgo moon welcome thank you so much for joining now for specific dates um please do look i'm just looking at the time six minutes please do look at the description below uh, i'm going to put all the specific dates there but mars kate conjunction is happening for you in your fourth house um, there's a lot to focus on in your fourth house there's a lot of energy there there's jupiter's there as well and none of these are hugely comfortable to be there right so um attention focus may be needed at home uh, you might want to progress on your creativity, on your work, but somehow you're being dragged to the home, I feel. Um, mother's health may be in focus. Your courage and other people's resources may be in focus. So that's when I'm looking at the Lords, um, what Mars Lords over. Um, Venus is exalted, but it's in your seventh house. This is not great either. Venus, I don't have anything great to report there. Not great for business uh, or partner potentially. Um, and you, know, you just want to be careful in those relationships. You just want to spend a bit more time, think a bit more. Um, good news though, great news. I'm glad to report some good news for you. Mercury is in your sixth from the moon, so this is fantastic. You'll have the logic, concentration powers and intelligence to work out solutions to any problems that you might be having. You can, through your logical mind, create order in chaos. So brilliant, right? Um, your mind is your superpower this month. Use it to great effect. 25th Feb, Mercury is combust and retrograde. So be careful on that day. Okay, be careful what you say. Be careful how you speak. So thank you so much, Virgo Moon. We are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, for the specific dates, please look at the description below. But I'm going to quickly take you through exactly what's going on. So, um, Mars K2 is conjunct third from the moon for you this month. Oh, this is brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. Only three people are getting this level of excitement from me <laughs> this month when it comes to Mars K2, and you're one of them. So, you will have the courage and the confidence to win. Fantastic. You can overcome competitors, you can succeed at work. Fight for what you believe in. This is great great energy um, promote yourself step forward speak right media speak get in front of people you know this is a good time but i will say mercury is retrograde and combust on the 25th so be particularly careful how you speak on the 25th um, but otherwise it's all quite good uh, and i mean look mercury is not in the best transit for you fifth from the moon all right so what I said about Mars K to conjunction, that energy is there, um, but just double check an email before you send it. Think twice before you speak. Strategize. Um, you know, when it comes to things like logic, mind based things, just take a bit of time, okay? Uh, neither is Venus. Okay, so Venus is exalted, but it's six from your moon. Six from your moon is not ideal. So relationships could also. Um, be a bit challenging this month. I'm still going to be positive for you um, because Venus is at least exalted, right? But it's six from the moon and that's not great. So yeah, with the great action of Mars K through third house from the moon, I mean you can socialize. If you're single for example, you do want to meet someone, um, you could be social, you could go out and do things but uh, much much better transits are coming for both Venus and Mercury your strong suits this time are Mars and Ketu wear red honor Mars okay and um, fight the good fight if you're feeling confident and, and like you want to press ahead fight the good fight also remember that 99% of battles are not worth fighting okay just bear that one in mind as well all right Libra Moon Thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Just keeping an eye on the time. It's all good. Uh, right, so for specific dates, please look at the description below. This time I'm not going to put dates within this um, report. Look below to see the specific dates, but I can tell you that the crescendo of energy, the, the, the you know, the main excitement of this energy is mid-Feb, right? Um, especially when it comes to K2 Mars conjunction, but I'm going to talk about these now in general terms. So yes, I know you want to fly forward with Saturn. I've got that note here. I know. But if you're feeling like some of you are flying forwards with Saturn, some of you are doing amazing. It's going great. But then some of you might 
feel that there are some snags and that there's something holding you back a little bit and you're thinking what is that okay if you're wondering what that is Mars could be quite strong for you um, Ketu could be quite strong for you so Mars Ketu conjunction this month um, could bring challenges to family relations this is happening in your second house from the moon so family relations could make you feel tired health wise as well um, if you're feeling tired rest okay that's your body just saying slow down because there's all the time in the world and, and time is an illusion anyway right so what's the rush um, but let's see we've got Jupiter here Jupiter's bringing you good vibes and stability so that's great so you've got a nice balancing energy there so nothing too dramatic should be happening there um, you do have some oh you've got beautiful news here so you've got uh, Mercury fourth from the moon beautiful great so this is great for magnetizing new income opportunities this is good for money um, great time for education as well this is great your concentration should be really really good so that's wonderful use that to great effect Venus is exalted and in your fifth house beautiful singles get out and mingle go and meet someone new romance strut your stuff do what you have to do but just get out there Scorpio moon this is looking quite good for you and uh, I'm excited so I hope you're gonna have a really beautiful month and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius moon Sagittarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining now for specific dates have a look at the description below uh, I'm going to put all the dates there but in this report I'm just going to talk in general terms about what's happening you'll find that the energies of this are going to crescendo kind of mid-month type time so um, Mars K because all these are happening all month basically so Mars K the conjunction is happening in your first house and Jupiter is here too so none of these are in a brilliant position for you um, and this could all be a little bit physically tiring okay so if you're feeling tired please just rest remember that time is an illusion uh, so what's the rush right just just take your time take time go slow if you aren't if if the energy isn't naturally there for you it might be some of this might be good for some of you depending on your specific um, chart and depending on your ascendant depending on a lot of things okay but if you're not feeling it don't push yourself right um, mercury isn't in the best position for you either third from the moon be careful with how you communicate think twice speak once right um, especially on the 25th of Feb when Mercury is combust and retrograde that's a particular day that we've all got to look out for all right um, yeah I might switch my phone off on that day I tell you what now there is some good news there's some beautiful news Venus is fourth from your moon this is great so this is really beautiful you'll be happy being at home okay be at home more nurture yourself pamper yourself uh, treat yourself you know indulging good movies good books um, but definitely treat and pamper yourself and relax at home if you can that's really nice energy there if you're up here in the northern hemisphere where it's kind of cold cozy time right just enjoy that I love all that stuff so Sagittarius moon thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining just checking the time we're good uh, for specific dates please look at the description below I'm going to put specific dates below but all that I'm going to talk about here is basically happening across the entire month of Feb so um, in particular things like Mars Ketu conjunction that's going to crescendo kind of mid-month type time so let's take a look at this so we've got Mars Ketu conjunction happening in your 12th house from the moon Jupiter is there too so none of these are particularly in the best position right so you might be experiencing a few things this might manifest a few ways it might experience manifest in um, higher expenses okay so your expenses might be a bit higher this month you might have a loss of energy of some kind maybe you're worried about something maybe you're worried about someone um, so the other thing is that sleep can really be impacted you are very heavy 12th house here sometimes when that happens it's very difficult to sleep so if you're finding it hard to sleep don't worry this time is going to pass okay it's just for a short term and you know maybe stay up read a book or, or um, just do relaxing things you know that uh, don't 
that aren't high energy, but that feed and nourish your soul, right? Read something spiritual. Don't read a thriller. <laughs> well, you can, I mean, but whatever. Let's have a look. There must be some good news for you. Yes, there is. Mercury is having a good transit. Good, because Mercury's not great for everybody and he's good for you, so that's good. So that's second from the moon. Um, this could be a time to acquire more wealth and prosperity. Okay, so on the one hand, you might be spending a bit of money, but on the one hand, you might be bringing quite a bit more in, so that's good. Um, be very careful with your speech, especially on the 25th of Feb when Mercury is combust and retrograde. We are all going to have to look out for that one. Right, I, actually, I've just realized I should not make a video on the 25th of Feb. Good. Um, Venus transit. That just occurred to me just now. I'm at the 10th one and I've realized that. Uh, Venus transit is great. Oh, fantastic. Good for you. Oh, beautiful. That's a great one for socializing. So if you are single, get out and mingle. It's cheesy. I know it rhymes. I stole it from Sasha Bonison, but it's a great phrase. Um, it's a great time to meet new people. Great time for hobbies. Great time to enjoy. Great time to do fun stuff. So Capricorn, it's, uh, it's nice. It's good. It's a good transit. It's a good month. It's going to be a good month. So wish you well, Capricorn Moon. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, for specific dates, look at the description below. You'll find all the information there. I'm just checking the time. We're good for time. Uh, the energies are really going to crescendo kind of mid-month after the 20th, that kind of thing. So we're looking at mars the conjunction, which is happening for you in your 12th house. Jupiter is there too. Oh, fantastic. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure I meant 11th. That is a mistake on my part. 11th house for me. <laughs> They're all beautifully placed. Um, they are. They are all beautifully placed. You see, I know that because my notes and uh, my... I'm, I, I apologize sincerely, Aquarius. I mean, I'm going to leave that in. you got to... Look at me, I'm having a bit of met Mercury retrograde a little bit in advance, right? So uh, I'm already tuning into the future. Mars K the conjunction is happening in your 11th house. This is beautiful, all right? Jupiter's here too. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You got a good thing. So lots of energy supporting you to fight and to win. Fight for what you believe in and you will win, okay? So this can be amazing. This can be amazing if like, um, say for example, you have competitors at work, or say for example, you wanna get your idea ahead, you wanna get your idea approved. This can be amazing for that. So um, Mercury is not so well placed. Okay, so I would think a few times before speaking, especially on the 25th of Feb, where Mercury is combust and retrograde. Look, absolutely, we're all going to have to be careful um, on the 25th of Feb when it comes to speech, speaking, communication, all that kind of thing. But um, but I do, I love, look, you've got three planets in the 11th house there and, and hopefully some new opportunities um, or you'll be able to... To win. It, it is about winning for sure. Um, Venus is in your second house from the moon. So this is beautiful. This is beautiful for love. This is great for time with your family. Uh, great time for shopping. If you want to buy something beautiful, do it. Okay. If you've been saving up for something beautiful, maybe it's a bit expensive. If you've got the money, um, and who knows, with that 11th house, you might be magnetizing some more money as well. So spend. Honestly, treat yourself. So buy something new that you've been eyeing out. Yeah, treat yourself if you can. So Aquarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. I apologize for my terrifically huge blunder in the start of this report for you. But thank you, you've been lovely. Looking at the time, 20 minutes, we're all good. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining Pisces Moon. I just made a bit of a boo-boo in Aquarius Moon and it's because my notes. So I'm just going to double check. Where is this Mars conjunct conjunction happening for you? I think it's happening in your 10th house. But let me just check that because I made a bit of a blunder in... Oh good, you're here. Yeah, it's happening in the 10th house. No, we're all good. I got it right. Because there was a... Anyway, uh, let's have a look. So for specific dates, look at the description below. I'm going to put all the specific dates in there. As for the energies of this month, all that I'm about to talk about is happening across the entire month. There will be a crescendo of energy kind of mid-month, around the 20th, that kind of thing. You're going to experience some more stuff there. So 
What have we got in store? We've got Mars K2 conjunction happening in your 10th house. Jupiter is there as well. Okay, look, none of these are particularly happy to be there. All right, and that's all in your house of career. Okay, three major energies. So focus is going to be, yeah, heavy energy in the 10th house. It may bring the focus on your career. So there is going to be focus on your career, I do believe, because there's that movement happening, especially with Mars there. I've got the note, if you're being drawn into battles at work, I'd say mm, try to stay away from those or try to... Um, I mean, you can take a bit of an advisory role. Look, if you can take a bit of an advisory stance, if let's say, for example, you're being drawn into some drama at work or drawn into some fight or something, you will have the skill, you will have the wisdom. It's not like you shouldn't go there. So maybe you can offer your wisdom, but don't get involved, I think is what I'd like to say there. So be careful. Think rethink before speaking that kind of thing um 25th feb where Met mercury is retrograde and combust 25th feb basically just really be careful with what you say on that day uh, i'm gonna have to be careful too i was just thinking a couple of signs ago i was thinking i shouldn't make a video on the 25th of feb i should mark it in my diary um so yeah i will mark it in my diary mercury is 12th from the moon for you so that's not the best transit either it can impact your health. You may feel tired. It just might drain you a little bit. It might also, it might either drain you health wise or it might um, cause some higher expenses as well. So that's one to watch out for. But um, if you are feeling tired, rest is my advice. Just go slow. There are going to be better transits, there's going to be better energy uh, happening for you. And I know, that, I think Pisces Moon, you're the one that's getting all the excellent stuff with, hang on, let's have a look, Saturn, isn't it? Saturn's really amazing for you. So yeah, if, if, if it's all started and you're kind of thinking, where's all the whiz bang wonderful? It's coming, just, <laughs> it's coming, right? But there might be, and this is the thing, yes, Saturn has just shifted, but there's going to be some snags. There is still some um, past work sometimes, and, and that's happening for a couple of other signs as well, not just you. So, uh, you know, we're at the beginning of a 2.5 years here, so we're just at the start. Um, good news. Yay, I have good news for you. Venus is in your first house from the moon. So this is beautiful for love. Uh, this is beautiful for looking good and feeling good. We all like that. So luxuriate in your radiance and beauty. Uh, this is a great time to meet someone new. So it's Valentine's Day. And if you're single, perhaps it's time to get out and mingle, right? Just saying, you don't have to. But if you do, if you want to, it's a good time for that. I think we've come to the end of that. 24 minutes, perfect. My memory card is about to fill up and fall over anyway. So if anyone's stayed this far, thank you so much for watching. Of course, Pisces Moon is here, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking and sharing my videos. I really appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you next time.